visit to the bodega is all that you would want from a sherry tour. Eduardo shows around the cellars and explains every step of the winemaking art. Even if it may seem otherwise, these bodegas are not museums. They are living and breathing business assets that require a lot of work to upkeep. If you're lucky, you can get to see the inner workings of the winery with the secrets of the legendary system of Soledad and Criaderas in full display, which in Bodegas Tradición is yet again a priceless window into a long lost past. Would you like to see um, what we call a jarreo or a rocío? Mm -hmm. So oh, basically wow. here what we have, well, his cell. Hi, cell. ¿Qué tal? Right, tal. Um, what we have here in a system of criaderas and soleras is generally the younger wines are on top of the, of the system, okay? And whenever we bottle, we need to replace the wine that we have bottled. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move it from the younger section to the older section, okay? You see, um, very important also for these kinds of wines that are oxidative wines, that um, that way of using the jar, la jarra, mm -hmm. uh, to give an extra aeration that is going to make the oxidation much more uh, homogeneous. Right. Um, and then we have um, that canoa is going to allow us um, a very slow flow of the wine. Well, we're going to start doing the, the tasting so you have a better um, idea of what we produce and mm -hmm. um, also visitors that may want to come uh, will know the ones that they're going to be tasting. We'll start with our, our Fino, it's a, a lighter of our wines, the younger of our wines, although it's a very old wine for the average of, of what we find in the market. It's a 10 year old Fino, um, well, it comes from a selection of vineyards of mainly Balbaina uh, area, mm -hmm. uh, very fresh, uh, very Atlantic, with a lot of purity in the in the soil of the chalk of the soil. Cool. Okay. Okay. It's amazing the the, uh, the effect of the floor, uh, how you can smell that uh, that, that yeast and mm -hmm. see that um, pastry side that. Uh, dry grass, you know, it reminds you a, a, a bit like that summer. It's very marine also, very salty, um, a bit like uh, when you open up an, an oyster or you right. get that sensation, clean marine sensation. As you see, it's not, very, it's not aggressive, you know, it's very delicate nose. Subtle power, if you can. Mm. Okay, it's a wine that grows in your palate. Yeah, yeah. Um, amazing. Of course, any seafood would work really well. It can go with a, a huge array of things. Uh, like, for example, a carbonara with with white pepper. Right. It works perfectly well. It can go even with some kinds of cheese mm -hmm. that are not too strong, um, as was a pre-dessert. It's very good because it's also digestive, so mm -hmm. it works as, as both. Um, and now we move on to a certified age uh, sherry, a very old rare sherry, over 30 years. Okay. In this case, a Palo Cortado. Um, you know, Palo Cortado tends to be a bit the myth and the mystery mm -hmm. uh, around. And here we try to well, make it more clear to everyone. Right. A palo cortado needs the finesse of an amontillado in the nose and the roundness of an oloroso in the palate. So that finesse of an amontillado is going to come from the um, uh, agent under velo, yeah. the flor, um, and the roundness of an oloroso comes from the lack of velo de flor. Nutty, but not excessively nutty, not heavy nutty. Mm -hmm. um, a wine that is great as 
as an aperitif if you want with some cold cuts with game um, yeah, it goes yeah. really really well um, with smoked you see it's got a little touch of mm. smokiness uh, with smoked meats and fish uh, connects really really well and and also smoked, che uh, smoked cheese there's not a there's a wine that can go all throughout the meal, yep. I will say. Yep. We move to the, to the Oloroso now. Um, still, as people all may know, 100% Palomino. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the Oloroso, we're looking for power. Fino and Palo Cortado are all about elegance and finesse. Here, although it's elegant, it's got a punch. And that is coming from a selection of vineyards that are, are less, less, let's say, Atlantic, more continental. Right. And in this case, it's well, also over 30 years old, or certified as very old red sherry. Um, um, but in this case, we go much further. It's 45. 45. Yeah. Right. So the, this Oloroso, you would pair it with what what types of food? For me, Oloroso is any moment of the day a little brunch you know, a little piece of uh, tortilla yeah, or yeah. jamon or kind whatever. of a picnic yeah. Yeah, a little picnic uh, small glass you don't need much mm. small glass of oloroso you know warms you up you know it just cheers you up and it goes well with whatever bite you're going to have if you sit in down on the table um, you do a stew um, imagine you know also um, you know, a dark sauce kind of uh, mm. stew with uh, meat and things like that goes really well. Um, with anything that is kind of uh, potage, uh, beans, mm. and mm. Um, that goes really, really well. After meal kind of uh, drink, instead of mm -hmm. having, you're not feeling like a spirit. No. This, you have very similar sensations as a barrel aged spirit with half the alcohol content mm -hmm. and many other complexities uh, around. Um, Amontillado, uh, as you know, the oxidative evolution of a fino, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when fino loses the, the velo de flor that protects it against the, the air, we're going to have that you know, evolution. Um, generally, people would have tasted the Amontillado after the fin for their connection. Yes. But, um, I personally prefer the evolution of intensity in, right. the, in the palate. Much more nuttier than, than mm. the previous, um, more into the almond, um, almond side with that kind of See that the marine side of the fino transformed to be a bit more like dried algae, you know, right. like uh, seaweed. And uh, very good for gastronomy, but you're looking for intensity. Whatever you're mm -hmm. going to put on the side needs to be, you know, imagine a dried sardine, anchovies, um, uh, pickles with uh, rices that have you know, a good concentration, uh, like for example with yeah with seafood and things mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. um, lobster biscuit, if, if you have a, yeah. if you can imagine that intensity flavor, you mm -hmm. know, it goes really well. Okay. And with your winter soup, put a few drops in it. In the, in, in the soup, yeah. yeah. Really nice. Mm. If you like very old cheese, hard cheese, or even those um, soft cheese that are a bit um, ammoniac, kind mm -hmm. of you yeah. know, that intensity that mm. you know burns your nose, yeah. that goes really well. Right. With. And finally, we move to the sweet side. Mm -hmm. um, our cream sherry, twenty year old. It's a selection of Olorosos. Okay, seventy percent more or less. Looking for Oloroso's casks that are very crisp, that are fresh, mm -hmm. have that citric side. And then the 30% um, of Pedro Jimenez, of around six years old. So 
not too old to become cloying, right. to maintain that freshness. And very importantly, once we do the blend, we keep them in casks for another couple of years. Right. As someone told me, not the cream my granny used to drink. <laughs> This is very complex, mm -hmm. very aromatic. Mm -hmm. It's not the usual cream. Mm -hmm. Amazing with mince pie, of course. <laughs> but any any Christmassy thing, mm -hmm. and I can say, look, uh, the British Christmas um, um, sweets are amazing and um, they the kind of look designed for this wine <laughs> or this wine designed, <laughs> designed for, for them. them. <laughs> um, good. And finally, this is the Petra Jimena, the last of our wines, also 20, over 20 years old, 100% raising Petra Jimena, this is very important. So the level of concentration, you would imagine this must be super thick, super, um, you know, flat, and sticky and uh, how you call it, um, cloy. Mm -hmm. But please give it a chance. Well, the first thing I've tried, I haven't tried it yet, but in the nose, it's super fresh. Mm -hmm. It's very, very fresh. Wow. This velvety. It's got everything you, you want to it's have. It's so easy. It's, it's not one of these. Um, Almost sugary, but mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you can feel. It yeah, it doesn't hurt in your in your um, wow. throat. Um, you have so many kinds of, of fruit going on there, from dates to to mm. dried even dried tomatoes. Sometimes it comes up. We got that um, regaliz, how you call it? Yeah, the, licorice. Licorice side and, and almost a coffee-like sensation mm. at the end that makes everything balance. Um, is one of the treasures of 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 the Andalusian winemaking, uh, Pedro Jimenez, and in Jerez, I think we have a very, very good uh, representation. Mm. The visit to Bodegas Tradición is a must if you like sherry, and it is one that satisfies all the senses. Gorgeous art, rich history, delectable gastronomy, and of course, the warmth and professionalism of the people who run this special bodega. We hope you enjoyed today's getaway and we invite you to come on a journey with us in the weeks to come. So Eduardo, as, as you know, it, it, this was my first visit, but it won't be my last, that's for sure. Thank you very much for, Thank you for, for showing coming. us around. It's been a pleasure and hope to see you Perfect. back soon. Mm -hmm.